I am here as a third party intervener in that matter. I do not dispute any of the facts in these charging instruments and I do not consent to or agree to being called their man, Your Honor. I do want to address uh, the case law that was filed by Mr. Brooks. You had indicated there was this United States v. Lopez. I had looked up a case. I don't know if it's the one that you were referring to. I asked you if it was from 1995. You thought it was. Have you been able to look through your documents to tell me which United States versus Lopez you were referring? Um, I have not, but I also uh, cited Hagen's versus Levine as well. 415 U.S. 533, or I think you may have my understanding uh, of that particular case was um, dealing with the specifics of uh, subject matter and personal jurisdiction, which is why um, it was brought up for the record, which is something that I have been doing adamantly is asking for the court to provide verified proof of jurisdiction, which I have not been provided with as of yet. The court's not required to do that, sir. I understand what your objection is. It's been noted for the record multiple times um, and the previous rulings of the court stand. I see no reason to revisit those issues or what we call legally um, a motion for reconsideration. Even if I were to take your reference to these cases as a request to reconsider based on um, a new legal argument, um, the cases that I reviewed um, don't support that. Um, I do want to give the state an opportunity to at least make a record. I did not find any verbiage from any of these three cases that would um, raise any, any type of argument in this case that this court does not have jurisdiction to hear this case. Thank you, Mr. Brooks, your response. Yeah, I, I respectfully object to that. Um, it's, it's clear in, in both of those cases that ultimately those cases were called correct by the Supreme Court in that both cases ended up being voided because there was no jurisdiction. Same thing in this case, how, I, how it applies is this court has yet to prove that it has jurisdiction. It has, it has not been proven. There's been uh, no certified document paperwork. There's been no proof. There's been no response to the uh, demand for the statement of particulars. There's been um, no response. I mean, we haven't even established that the plaintiff is a living human being and not an entity. There are so many things that have yet to even be proven. Thank you for your arguments, sir. First of all, the Hagans and the Milo decisions, or Melo, um, these were civil lawsuits. They weren't criminal cases at all. The arguments that you raise related to the Bill of Particulars, related to uh, those types of issues, um, have all been debunked. And so there's no requirement for this court to do what you are asking or demanding it to do. Uh, and for all of those reasons, this court will deny your request to dismiss. Your Honor, may I respectfully request a legal reconsideration for your ruling? You just cited a, a, a case law from United States versus Benneby, correct? Um, my reasoning stands. The record before you and on the record speaks for itself. I'm not going to address this any further. Your objections are noted. Respectfully, Your Honor, may I May I ask for a written judicial finding of facts and conclusion of law in this matter? You may request that request is denied. Based on what law or fact, Your Honor? All right, Mr. Brooks, your objections are noted. I want to keep moving forward today. May I respectfully, may I respectfully object to that, Your Honor, based on the fact that you cited something that was a, a federal law. And then the cases that you went over in the challenge of jurisdiction, we're all dealing with federal guidelines. This court's not going to explain the law to you, sir. May I, may I respectfully object, Your Honor, and, and still ask for verified proof of... Mr. Brooks, I've already addressed that the request is denied. All right, moving may, on, may uh, can the state... I'm moving object. on, Mr. Brooks. Thank you. Your objections are noted. Um, Attorney Opper, I'd like to address the may issue... Object, Your Honor. Your objections noted. Mr. Brooks, any questions about what I've advised you about the interpreter? Does that change your decision at all to call the witness? 
Um, it doesn't change me wanting to call the witness, and I want to state for the record that I object to being called their name. I'm a living and breathing human being. And we paused at 27 seconds. Ms. Grabo, did you see yourself in that video? Yes, I did. What about Adelia? Did you see her? I, with the amount of people, I did not directly see her. Okay, let's go back to the beginning and turn the audio off. And let's go at about 50% speed. Objection was the relevance of showing the video twice. Overruled. Grounds. It's Grounds. All the questions I have. Thank you. All right, thank you. <coughs> Do you have any cross for this witness? Yes. Before you were struck by the vehicle, you said that um, you heard changes in sound to the parade that was the people marching in the parade in the back of you, right? Do you recall what the sounds were that you heard? Did it seem to get louder? Was it already pretty noisy with the parade going on? And you stated that it was uh, really windy and cold that, that uh, evening. Would it be any reason why you wouldn't be able to hear everything going on behind you? Uh, the vehicle that struck you, do you recall seeing uh, a driver? No, I seen the red hood. So you, you didn't see uh, the driver, anybody in the vehicle? No license plates? Or you recall how fast the vehicle might have been traveling? It all happened extremely fast. So you don't recall? I, with the chaos that was going around that day, no, I do not remember exactly. And you stated that after you were struck, you got up and ran to your daughter, correct? And you were able to do that with your leg injury. So when was it that you knew that you had the, I think you said knee injury. When did that pain in your leg set in, but you were still able to get up and run? Do you recall how long before you received medical treatment? Fair to say that you waited a little bit before you tended to yourself. Do you recall how long you were treated? I think they give you any uh, pain medication or? I was taking ibuprofen and Tylenol, that is it. Do you recall what time you arrived at the parade? Were you able to see uh, what, the vehicle did after you were struck? You didn't see what, uh, the route that the, ve the vehicle traveled or anything after that? Do you recall how long you were marching in the parade before you were struck? Were you near any uh, cross streets or intersections? Do you recall if they were barricaded? Do you recall if any law enforcement may have been standing by those intersections? Do you recall any reports coming over uh, any radios by law enforcement? After? We were hit, was shots fired. So you did hear shots fired, did that come from? I don't from? know if it was directly from a cop or if it was people running. Did you hear the shots? I did not. So after you were struck, it would be fair to say that it got louder than what it was before. With all the noise and chaos going on, do you think it would have been hard for you to hear a horn honking? I did not hear a horn. Would it have been hard? The question was, would it have been hard for you to hear it after it became chaotic? I was not listening to listening for a horn after we had already been hit by the vehicle. So it'd be fair to say you wouldn't be able to recall. Did you file any uh, claim in this incident? Did you file a, a report as an injured party in this matter? Yes. So it would be fair to say that you identify yourself as an injured party? Do you recall uh, the the officer that you reported your uh, claim with? Have you seen or read a complaint in this matter? What do you mean by that? Have you seen a written complaint or read a written complaint in this matter? Objection. Grounds. Mr. Brooks, are you referring to the criminal complaint in this case or something else? I'm referring to something else, the complaint. Well, then I'll sustain the objection uh, as to the form of the question. It's vague. May I respectfully ask on what grounds, Your Honor? It's vague. Do you know of any complaint being filed in this matter? Objection. Vague. Grounds. Sustained. Grounds. That's the form of the question. Were you aware that it may be possible that you could give testimony in this matter? Did you seek to give testimony in this matter? And who were you informed by? Was that in form of a subpoena or was it a conversation? Or so it'd be fair to say that you did have a conversation. 
conversation with with the district attorney's office. Yes. Did they ever inform you of who the plaintiff was in this matter? Objection, Ellis. Grounds. Sustained. Are you aware of any plaintiff in this matter? Objection. Grounds. Relevance. Grounds. Sustained. Have you ever talked to the plaintiff in this matter? Objection. Ever seen the plaintiff in this matter? Objection. Relevance. Grounds. Sustained under 90611, Mr. Brooks. You need to move on to a new topic or I will close the cross exam. I, I will move on. I'll just, it, it has to be some type of ground stated other than relevancy or or anything like that. The, the real ground should be put on record, Your Honor. We all deserve to know. The jury deserves to know. It's not relevant. Move on. So are you bringing this claim against the accused defending in this matter? Objection. Vague. Grounds. Sustained. On what grounds, Your Honor? It's vague. That's the form of the question. Have you received, uh, seek to receive any recovered damages or anything in the matter? Um, the only thing that we got were was help to pay for our medical bills. Is that through uh, the state of Wisconsin? Are you the, are you listed as a plaintiff in this matter? Are you the plaintiff? Did you file the claim? Objection. That's a relevant. compound question. Ground. Sustained us to the form of the question, Mr. Brooks. Did you file a claim? Move on. Do you see the state of Wisconsin present in the court? Objection. Grounds. Sustained under 90611. I warn you to avoid that topic or I would cease cross exam. So I'll give you one more opportunity to ask a different line of question. Do you recall when you gave your interview to law enforcement? Would it be fair to say it was a few days or a week or so? Do you remember being interviewed by a detective? Jeffrey Adent, do you remember where you were interviewed? Do you recall if it was on November 30 of 2021? Can you recall why it took a little bit for you to be interviewed by law enforcement? Uh, did you seek to be interviewed in any way? You don't recall calling any law enforcement or attempting to file a report. Did you follow up in the days after? I don't recall if I did. Do you recall stating that you did not see what happened to your daughter? Do you recall being left a business card by Dr. Daryl L. Williams, PhD? Would it be fair to say that he was the one that told you what happened? I still to this day don't know directly what happened to my daughter. I just know that she was hit by the red vehicle as I was laying on the ground after I was hit. So it would be fair to say if you didn't see what actually happened to your daughter, you didn't see what happened to anyone else? Grounds. Grounds. Sustained us to the form of the question. Would it be fair to say that it was difficult to see if anyone else was struck? No, I did not see directly anywhere besides the tire going in front of my face. So it would be fair to say that you didn't see anyone get struck besides yourself? It would be kind of difficult to see beyond that. No further questions. Uh, can I just clarify, Ms. Grabo? The last time you saw your daughter before you got struck, where was she? Irrelevant. Overruled. She was walking over. Or she came over by me to get her can get more candy to pass out, and she was walking off to the sidewalk to hand out more candy. Sidewalk on which side of the Burris float? Objection hearsay. Overruled. That would be to the driver's side of, so to the left. Okay. And then you got struck. And where's the next place that you saw Adelia? I Objection seen Adelia. Hearsay. Overruled. She that she didn't see anything. It's not hearsay, Mr. Brooks. That's the definition of hearsay. Uh, Mr. Brooks, the objection is noted. It's overruled. On what grounds, Your Honor? I direct your attention to Section 90801, sir. Um, you may answer the question. After I got up, I found my daughter in the middle of the road. She was no longer by the sidewalk. Was she 
Where was she in relation to the the Burris, the truck that was pulling the float? Objection, hearsay. Overruled. Direct your attention to 90801, mm -hmm. sir. It's not hearsay. Go ahead, you may answer. She was towards the driver's side, the front end of the vehicle. So she was more towards the front of the vehicle. You testified that after you were struck, uh, the noise in the area increased. It got louder. You're yes. saying that? And so as a result of that increase in noise, you are not you weren't listening for a horn? No. Okay. What about before you got struck? Did you hear the sound of a horn? I did not. Hearsay. It's not hearsay. Overruled. Sir, do you live in the city of Waukesha? Yes, I do. Are you familiar with the program, the Waukesha Blazers Youth Baseball Program? Yes, I am. Overruled. So initially I'm going to, it's a two minute and 29 second video. I'm going to have it play and I will let Ms. Gussie know when. Objection, how long is the video it's seeking to be played? It's two minutes and 29 seconds. So would that be the entire video? That would be the entire Exhibit 11. I remember Caden was up to the left of our vehicle. That's somewhere, I wasn't sure exactly. And if you can recall, was the, the vehicle in the middle of Main Street? Objection, here's her. Overruled. You may answer, sir. From what I remember, yes. Was there a group immediately after the Blazers team in the parade? Objection. Relevant. Overruled. You may answer, sir. Was it coming on the south side of the street, the middle of the street, or the north side of the street, which would have been to your right? Objection. Here, sir. Overruled. You may answer. Jackson was motionless on the ground, eyes open, didn't appear to be aware. Did he appear to be alive? Was unsure. Did he later, did you find out that he died as a result of being struck? I did. Overruled, please answer my statement. Did Caden get struck? Caden told me he did. What injuries did he have? Objection, hearsay, just say no. It's not for sure. Overruled, this witness may answer based on personal knowledge. And do you know if Caden got struck by the red SUV? Objection, hearsay. Overruled. Yes, he did. Um, did you give a statement at some point? I think it was part of a parade survey, if you recall that. Yes. Um, that was, I think, created by the Victim Witness Program, sent out by the Victim Witness Program, and then you would have sent it back. Do you recall that? Yes, I do. And um, was that something that you created? Yes, those are my words. Okay. And is it correct that that form says, after that I saw the car drive past us on the left, striking two of our players, Tucker and Jackson Sparks? Yes. Objection, hearsay. Overruled. Yeah, that's hearsay. Overruled his answer, may stand. Thank you. And do you know if Jackson Sparks was injured? I'm sorry, Tucker Sparks. Yes, he was. Okay, do you know um, what injuries he had? Objection, hearsay. Overruled. Now, after the car went to the left side of the Blazers truck, striking the kids, did you see the path that it took? Objection, hearsay. Overruled. Yes, I remember it going back to the right side of the road after that. So, do you know approximately how far Jackson was in front of the Blazers truck um, when you went and you talked to his father, Aaron, who was with Jackson? Objection, hearsay. Overruled. I don't remember. Okay. Can you estimate approximately how fast it was going before when you first took notice of the red SUV when you looked back? Objection, hearsay. Overruled. And I'm assuming when you're in a parade, you're not going, although the speed limit on that road might be 25 miles per hour, you're not going 25 miles per hour. Would that be a correct statement? Absolutely. Objection, hearsay. Okay. Overruled, his answer may stand. So did you see Jackson a second time um, on Main Street? Yes. Yeah. Overruled. And then there's a line on the left side of that diagram that goes down to the map where it leads to a, a yellow star. Do you see that? Yes. Would that be the area in which each of those people were struck by the red SUV? Objection, hearsay. Overruled. Um, have you seen this video before? I have. And does it accurately depict what occurred on November 21st of last year, uh, shortly before, during, and after the red SUV um, struck the Blazers? Yes. Um, permission to publish and admit exhibit um, 148 into evidence.
Objection is noted. Exhibit 148 is received. Permission to publish is granted. Sir, it's approximately three minutes and, and 22 seconds. I'm going to play that entire video um, initially, and then we'll we'll talk about it. Okay. I'm sorry, do we have the total again? Three minutes and 22 seconds. Thank you. Your objection is noted. It's overruled. What grounds? Relevance. What grounds? That is the grounds. Relevance. All right, I'm going to take a mid-morning break at this point, about uh, 15 to 20 minutes. All rise for the jury, please. Thank you, everyone. We are in recess. Sir, you may step down as well. I'll be back. All right, it's 20 minutes. All right, we will go back on the record appearances are as they were before. The judicial determination you made about the uh, jurisdiction. I thought it was very clear. So will proof be validated? Your request is denied. On what legal basis, Your Honor? The record stands, sir. Is that a judicial determination? My ruling was put on the record earlier, sir. So that is a judicial determination? Just a second, I'm going Sorry about that, just I just needed a second. Apologize to the witnesses. A little emotional right now for me, so I apologize to the court as well for the delay. Can you recall um, what time you arrived at the parade that evening? Do you recall how long you intended to stay? Uh, you testified earlier to uh, seeing uh, some of the video footage that, that was played, would that be fair to say? Do you recall how many times before today you saw the video footage? I believe I saw one of the videos once. And you don't recall seeing any of the other videos? Do you recall by whom you were showing the videos? Um, the folks at the prosecution table. That referring to the three prosecutors sitting there right now? Yes. You stated in testimony earlier that you did not see <coughs> the vehicle uh, strike the children that were in front of you. Would that be fair to say? <coughs> you said something to that effect. Would that be fair to say? You'd have to be more clear. You said something to that effect of what you just said. To what effect? That you, sitting here today, that you do not recall seeing anyone struck ahead of you. That's correct. And then, but then you also stated that you did see who was struck ahead of you. Is that a question? Would that be fair to say? In relation to what? In relation to someone being struck in front of you. When I was there or the video, what are you talking about? At any time. When you was there. When I wrote my statement, I wrote what I remembered at that time. So would it be fair to say that as you sit here today that anything about your statement may have changed? So your testimony here today would be accurate to what you reported. Do you recall saying in your interview with the DIC, your 11-year-old son and 9-year-old daughter suffered minor injuries in the event? 
Do you recall saying that the injuries were minor? No. Not direct witness to the statement? I would object to this being characterized as this witness's statement. Grounds. Uh, if he would like to call the DCI agent, then he may do so. Grounds. Uh, All right, I'm going to sustain the objection as to the form of the question. Rephrase. Do you recall stating to whomever interviewed you from the DCI that the injuries were minor? No. Any reason why they would report that you said that? I don't know. You'd have to ask them. Any reason why they would believe that that's what you said? Objection. Reported. Grounds. Relevance. Grounds. Calls for speculation on the part of the witness. <coughs> Sustained. Do you remember uh, giving a prepared statement? at 10.45 a.m. on 11.22 of 2021. Do you recall the gist of what you prepared? Specifically, that you heard commotion, turned around to see a stroller or something fall over about a block and a half behind us. Yes. Do you recall making that statement? I do. About how many people would you estimate was at the parade that day? I would guess the thousands. And you were able to see something fall over from a block and a half away amidst thousands of people yes and you don't recall what that was that you saw any reason as to why you would name what you saw for if you don't recall it i described it so you did see something fall objection asked and answered grounds asked and answered sustained do you recall what the item was objection grounds asked and answered grounds S sustained do you recall about what time you um, heard that shots were fired? It's after the red SUV drove by us. Do you recall the day of the incident, not the video? I remember it was after the vehicle drove by us. Did you hear the shots? No. Do you remember who that was reported by? I don't. About how long did it take you to look for everybody before you went into the antique store? After the shots fired, uh, were you able to retrieve everyone at that time? No. You recall who was missing? <laughs> Riley was missing. Did you leave the antique shop any time after you had gathered your loved ones into the antique shop? About how long before you left the antique shop? I don't remember. Do you remember what you did when you left the antique shop? I remember at some point seeing Jackson again on the ground. Did you continue looking for the loved one that you missed before you gathered the other ones into the antique shop? To the best of my recollection. You don't recall for sure? It was pretty chaotic. I was looking constantly for my missing daughter. Did you end up finding her? I did not find her, no. And who was Ben White? Was he with you in the antique shop? No. So at some point you got separated. Would that be fair to say? Separated from him. Separated from Ben. We were all separated as soon as the car drove by. Any idea where he may have gone at that time? No. You remember talking to him after you had gathered everybody in the antique shop? Did he say if he was injured in any way? Were you injured in any way? Was it pretty windy that day from your recollection? Pretty cold? Pretty loud? Would you say it was loud? Not overly loud. So you yourself were able to be, to hear pretty good over a parade with thousands of people? I would say so, yes. You had one of your daughters, Maya, with you that day. Would that be fair to say? That's fair to say. Was she injured in the event? I threw her to the ground to get her out of the way, so she had some scrapes. And would that result from you throwing her to the ground. Did she say that she had been injured in any way? Do you recall if anyone, anyone else besides uh, your children who were injured? I remember lots of people who were injured. Do you recall? I just answered that. Specifically, you remember who besides your children? You want me to list all of the names that were injured? No, uh, just rough estimate. That you recall? That I recall 10 to 15 people that I that saw. You, that you actually observed? Yes. Did you uh, render any assistance to any of those people? No. Any reason why not? My daughter was missing. So it would be fair to say at that moment your concern was your daughter that you didn't retrieve to go into the antique shop? My concern was for everyone that was just struck by the vehicle. Including your daughter that was missing, right? I was concerned about her missing, yes. Did you file any uh, reports other than uh, just... The Interview? What do you mean? Like an injury report or of any kind? Did you file any injury reports or? Judge, that's a big question. Grounds. 
So say this to the form of the question, sir. What I'm asking is, you know, usually if there's an injury, you will file a complaint. To the best of your recollection, did you file any complaint from the incident? I wouldn't consider it a complaint. I filed some paperwork. Do you recall if that was a complaint? <laughs> was it a claim in any sort of way? Yes. Do you recall what the claim was? And uh, what does that consist of? What, what are their resources in pursuant to the complaint that you filed? Or claim that you filed, right? Can you rephrase? What, what would be their assistance in to help you with your claim that you were filing? Um, it was to help with any medical bills that arose out of this situation. So it would be fair to say that you had a financial interest in this incident? Objection. This characterizes the, the testimony. Grounds. I believe it's relevant to the fact that bills were needed to be paid. It's relevant. Overruled. He may, he may answer. I was looking to get the medical bills covered, yes. So would that be fair to say that you had a financial interest? So if it hadn't gotten approved, would you have been able to do it yourself or would you have seek to do it yourself? Objection's relevance. Grounds. Um, sustain the question is vague. Would you, would you have seeking, would, would you have paid the medical bills yourself? Yes. Regardless to price? I generally pay my bills. And that, and specifically that matter? Not the rest of your bills, specifically that matter? Relevance. Grounds. Sustained. Move on, Mr. Brooks. Would you consider yourself an injured party in this case? No. Were you aware that you might be called to testify in this case? Did you seek to testify in this case? May I ask why you agreed to testify if you didn't seek to? Relevance. Grounds. Sustained. Do you recall who informed you via subpoena to testify? Are you aware of the plaintiff in this case? Objection. Relevance. Grounds. Sustained. Have you read a complaint? pursuant to this case in any, in, at any time? Do you understand that for uh, charges to be issued that it has to be a claim, therefore it has to be a plaintiff? Uh, objection. Grounds. Okay, so first of all, the grounds, grounds are relevancy. Um, it's not relevant, that would be the grounds. You also have to state the grounds. Hold on, let her get her position out, Mr. Brooks. And it mischaracterizes the former testimony. Sustained as to both grounds. So you're not sure if there's a plaintiff? Objection, Grounds. relevance. Sustained. Have you ever had any, any interaction with the plaintiff? Objection. Grounds. Sustained. Are you aware who brought charges in this matter? Objection, Grounds. Relevance. Sustained. If you're not sure of a complaint, how can you be sure of the charges in this case? Objection. Grounds. Sustained. Your Honor, with all due respect, this every question that I'm asking is relevant. If it pertains to the plaintiff in this matter, that seems to be nowhere to found. Making a legal argument, we'll take that up outside the presence of the jury. Move on. I believe the jury deserves to know the, who the plaintiff is in this matter. That's that's very relevant to the case. How can they rule on something when they don't Mr. Brooks, know who the plaintiff is? Please move on. Can you recall if you saw the driver of the vehicle? Were you able to catch a glimpse of the license plates? Do you recall if the vehicle had any tinted windows? About how far? From the vehicle where you when it passed you? From the red SUV? About how far from the vehicle were you when it passed you? Can you tell me which vehicle you're talking about? How far from the vehicle were you when it passed you? The vehicle that went around your Blazers vehicle? The no, red I guess I would ask the defendant grounds. to be more clear as to what vehicle and when it went around. Like at the beginning I, of the parade, before just, it struck his kids. I was just clear, I said the vehicle that went around his place. Sustained blazer. as to the form of the question. The vehicle that you observed, um, or rather I'll say the vehicle that you observed approaching, about how far from you, from it were you when it passed you? Objection, just to clarify, is he saying the, the red SUV that this witness has described as that red SUV was approaching him or some other vehicle? Sustained as to the form of the question. Well, I thought he was clear when he said that there was only one vehicle. You have to be clear with your question, Mr. Brooks. Excuse me, Your Honor? You have to be clear with your question. It's vague. Well, he, he as to the word vehicle, one. you need to be clear which vehicle you're questioning the witness the about. The vehicle that was approaching, that he said At was what point in time, what color is the vehicle, something like that, sir. The vehicle that you was there struck, strike anyone. How close to you were, how close 
were you to that vehicle when it passed you? About 10 feet probably from me. And you didn't see the driver, correct? Correct. Would it be fair to say that 10 feet from a vehicle is pretty close? Subjective. What would you say? Would you say that's pretty close? Would you say that 10 feet is pretty close to a vehicle? Would it be fair to say that that's close enough to be able to see who is driving? It depends on many other factors. What would those factors be? If they're looking at the vehicle. I'm assuming it would be fair to say that you were definitely looking at the vehicle, correct? Would that be fair to say? When? When it was approaching and when it passed. Yes. Any reason why you would not try to identify the driver? Because my children were about to be struck. Any reason why you would not try to see if you can catch a license plate number? Because people had just been hit. So it would be fair to say because of what you was observing, that would be the reason why you didn't try to give a, get a description of the driver or the license plate? My priority at the time was not identifying the driver. No further questions. Thank you. Can you redirect? Sir, you had indicated that you submitted a claim to the Victim Witness Program for medical bills. Is that correct? Correct. Were those the medical bills for Caden and Riley that were incurred as a result of the red SUV hitting both of those children? Yes. Overruled. His answer in my stand. And it was yes? Yes. Sure. No further questions. Thank you. Did the vehicle, when it struck you or after it struck you, did the vehicle continue on with its path of travel down the parade route? Yes. Overruled. And did you see the path it took after striking you? Yes. Where did it go? Forward. Did it, could you tell if it went straight ahead, swerved one way or the other way? No. Overruled, he may answer. It's, all right, go ahead. I'll probably leave that sign in the yard. Right, well, let me know when you need it. Go ahead, you may start your cross. Okay, <laughs> pull that exhibit up again, 148. You want it to the witness or publish? Um, publish. All right. How much of it do you want played before you ask a question? Uh, the first, what was it, 22, 23 seconds? All right, go ahead. Um, can, you, can you identify for the jury where you are in this video if you see yourself? From just looking at the video, have you seen this video before today? Just still shots of it, not the <laughs> video itself. So it would be fair to say that this is on your second time seeing this video? Yes. Do you, uh, you could take the video down, I'm sorry. Do you recall giving a, a, a statement to uh, Officer Copel? Do you recall giving a statement to an officer? An FBI agent. Do you recall if you, you gave them a summary of what you remember or if you actually wrote the statement yourself? Do you recall saying that you needed a walker to assist you in moving? Would it be fair to say that you're moving pretty good these days? That's just relevant. Grounds. Sustained. Would it be fair to say that you're walking pretty good as of now? Objection. Grounds. Just Sustained. Walk Not relevant. Did you also remember stating that you don't remember much from the event? I guess it would be the summary of the report of the statement that you gave to the officer, which I have right here. It says that you stated that you don't remember much from the event, but made it clear that your primary concern was needing to know where your children were after being struck. Would that be fair to say? Do you recall uh, what you did after being struck? I could not move, I was on the ground. Do you recall how long before you, you were moved from your position? Uh, were you helped by someone or? Yes, two people. And where did they take you? And from there, did you receive any medical attention? Do you recall where that was? You recall who took you to Memorial Hospital? You remember the officer's name? Do you recall what date you made the report to the officer? Or the date that you were interviewed, rather? Which time? So there was more than one time? Do you recall making a re uh, or giving an interview rather on the 24th of November of 2021? Do you recall what date the other report was taken? Do you remember by whom that night? An FBI agent. After being struck, you, you testified that you saw the vehicle kind of go up on the curb. Would that be fair to say? What did you see the vehicle do after it struck you? <coughs> what did you see it do? Did you see it strike anyone at that point? Or were you able to get a look at the driver in any way? A license plate number in any way? You testified for the jury earlier that you heard uh, 
screams from behind you before you were struck with that be fair to say <laughs> did you see the vehicle approaching at that point did you turn to see if anything was approaching at that point rather about how far was the vehicle away from you at that time that you observed it 20 yards you were able to make that assumption how i'm a coach and we go off yards a lot that makes sense would it be fair to say that that's relatively close close enough for you to see into the vehicle so it would be fair to say that no time during the incident you saw the driver. And just so I'm correct for the record, you said that um, were, were your, you said that your children were not injured in the incident. Would that be fair to say? Not physically. Where else? And when you were treated at uh, Memorial Hospital, um, did you receive any um, any pain medications, Tylenol, ibuprofen, anything like that? Do you recall how long you had to be treated before you were discharged? In the days after the event, did you uh, file any claim whatsoever? Um, did you file a, a claim as an injured party? Yes. Do you remember who that was with? No. So would you consider yourself to be an injured party in this matter? So you would consider yourself to be a plaintiff? Objection. Grounds. Do you recall who called you to testify in this matter? The DA. Can you point out for the jury which DA? No. Do you see him in court? No. Do you recall the name of the DA that you were referring to? I got a test to relevance for grounds. this hearing. Sustained. He's already indicated that the district attorney's office issued the subpoena. Well, actually, he said the DA, so that was pretty vague. Sir, did you mean the district attorney's office? Yes. Next question, please. Were you subpoenaed? Do you recall the name on the subpoena? Objection. Grounds. Sustained. So to the best of your knowledge, you're not aware of any plaintiff in this matter? Objection to relevance. Sustained. To the best of your knowledge, you have never seen the plaintiff in this matter? Objection to relevance. Sustained. Have you ever seen or read a complaint in this matter of any kind? Would you state what that was for the record and for the jury? I just saw the stuff in the news. And seeing stuff on the news would amount to a complaint? Can you ask it again? Have you read or seen a complaint in this matter? No. But it would be fair to say, just based on your testimony, that you saw reporting on the incident in the news. Would that be fair to say? Yes. Do you recall what you saw in the news? Did you see anything before the reported trial? Would it be fair to say that this uh, matter has been going on for quite some time, that there were a lot, a lot of reports in the news? Would that be fair to say? Objection relevance. Grounds. Ms. Brooks, unless you can tie it in to relevance with this witness, I'm inclined to I'm, sustain I'm that going, objection. I'm going somewhere with it. Then just ask the question, sir. Have you yourself seen anything in the news before the scheduled trial in regards to this matter? Can you state for the record or for the jury what that was? Did you at any time see any reports about the, the alleged defendant at any time? Mr. Brooks, I'm going to, under 90611, um, this is not a witness who identified the driver, so I'm not sure where the relevance is of this. We'll take it up outside the presence of the jury. You testified a few minutes earlier that you really don't remember much after being struck. Do you recall Do you recall where you were after being struck? I was on the ground. And about which area? Was it by the uh, Blazers truck, relatively close to the curb, or about what position near the Blazers truck? Yes. Did you see the vehicle strike anyone before it struck you? No. No further. Mr. Questions. Brooks, I cut you off when you were asking questions about what this witness had seen on the news. Um, I'll give you an opportunity to t give me an offer of proof as to why you believe that's relevant and specifically as to uh, this witness. Well, it's relevant because of. how close he testified to being away from the vehicle. He, he testified to being 20 yards away from the vehicle, which is, is not super close, but it's not far enough that you wouldn't be able to see a driver or see into the car. Well, so that's an argument, sir. So what questions would you have that you didn't already ask and why, how does the news reports relate to that? Maybe he may have seen the, the alleged defendant on the news, and maybe that may jog his memory back to if he seen the driver. But he testified he couldn't, he didn't see the driver. So 
He you also testified. Him? He also testified to never making the comment that he didn't remember the event. But it's clearly in his summary and in his report that he said that. So it's it's conflicting. His his report is conflicting with what he's testifying. So I was trying to get at the credibility of it. That was my whole aim. What does the news reports have to do with that, sir? The news reports are relevant just by the sheer amount of reporting that they that they've been report. This has been going on for a year. So that assumes facts, not an evidence, sir. So this witness did not identify you during this trial. This witness testified as to his observations uh, regarding the date in question, his injuries, and other things surrounding what he saw and heard and what he didn't see and hear. So the news reports. Uh, don't have any bearing on his credibility. The points that you bring up are arguments that you are that you may make if you choose um, during your closing arguments. Um, but the questions you are asking don't further that um, theory. So that's why I cut you off um, because there was not anything that you were connecting by way of relevance. With all due respect, Your Honor, a lot of the questions I ask are, are objected to. It seems like I can't even get to the questions that need to be answered. Sir, many of your questions go to these sovereign ideas that are frivolous arguments about the plaintiff and all of that. We give you a little bit of leeway. I give you a little bit of leeway on it. Um, but to ask about a claim because frankly it's a vague question and many of these uh, victims may in fact have made a claim with crime victim compensation um, and so I think that's potentially relevant um, but uh, you may be asking it for a different purpose I'm allowing it probably for a different purpose than you're anticipating but the questions about the state and the plaintiff other than when you talk about and you ask questions about their, who subpoenaed them, have they reviewed uh, anything in preparation for their testimony, those are all fair game. But other questions are not, and that's why there's an objection, and that's why I rule the way that I do. So ask relevant questions, they'll be answered. What, so what? I don't see any need for this witness to be brought back in. I don't believe that witness was on Mr. Brooks's list. So that witness is excused. Um, who's the next witness? With all respect, on the record, Your Honor. Uh, um, I've asked a question of the state. Let them answer, please. Will, will I be able Mr. To Brooks, let them over? answer. Hold on. On the record, before you bring me here. Quickly, Mr. Brooks. Um, you were, you made reference to uh, the questions I asked and being, you said something to the effect of sovereign things. I, I don't understand what you mean by that. Um, I, I have no anticipation on your rulings. I, I, I'm not trying to sit here and and I got enough work to do on the fly. I'm, I'm definitely not trying to sit here and trying to anticipate what will be ejected to, what will be ruled ruled on in any way. Um, I'm merely just. It was understood that this is this would be a whole new thing for me to do. Um, I apologize if I'm not as polished as I should be working on three days time before a trial. Um, we see all the work that I have that I haven't even gone through. Mr. Brooks, the jury's um, coming back right. in. For the record, I don't consent to that name and I don't consent to the arguments that the prosecution made. There are relevant questions as the jury deserves Mr. Brooks, to know. Please. The jury deserves to know who the plaintiff is in this matter. I think it's fair to them if they're to make an informed and intelligent decision, they should know who the plaintiff is. What were the approximate age ranges of the girls that you instructed at Extreme? Just myself. The, the girls who were dancers, how old were they? Does, was there a, a vehicle or a float associated with your group in the parade? Yeah, there was a truck. What kind of truck? Uh, it was Pickup truck? Yes, it, yeah, yeah. What's the objection? Um, her answer may stand. Uh, I'll instruct the state to avoid leading questions. Um, about how many times did you make it through your routine during that parade? 
Overruled. Um, I don't. I don't recall. Was there a certain point when your dancers stopped dancing? Overruled. You may answer. Um, yeah, they did stop dancing. I'm going to ask you to just take as much time as you need, read all those names, and then uh, describe for me what we're looking at. Um, it's the formation that the girls were in. On the day of the parade? Yes. And does that accurately represent where each of those girls were in formation? Yes. And you've reviewed a diagram similar to this before your testimony, right? Yes. Uh, I would move Exhibit 33 into evidence and ask for permission to publish. Before I allow that, um, if you could ask her about the non-labeled boxes. Sure. Uh, you can see that there are some boxes on this diagram that don't have names in them, is that right? Correct. What do those boxes represent? Um, who wasn't injured. So, but those are people? Those are oh, yes. members of the dance group? Yes. Um, but to your knowledge, a box without a name is a person who wasn't hit? Yes. Uh, I'll renew my request at this point. How, how is it legal to instruct the prosecution to ask a question that they should already know to ask? Um, your objection is noted. It's overruled. Exhibit 33 is received and permission to publish is granted. Um, do you recognize the truck at yes. this point that we stopped at? Yep. At 19 seconds? Yeah. What is, what's the truck? That's the truck that we had um, for Extreme. During the Christmas parade? Yes. Did you recognize uh, the people in front of the truck holding the banner? Objection. Um, the witness stated she didn't recognize the video. How is it permitted? Your objection is noted. It's overruled. She didn't answer the question. Does this video appear to be an accurate depiction of your group? along the parade route on during the Waukesha Christmas Parade? Yeah. You may answer. Yes. I move to admit exhibit number 32 and ask for permission to publish. I'm sorry, Your Honor, did you sustain that objection? I didn't rule on it. Which objection? That I just objected to. Um, it was overruled. Are you making that decision now? Um, there's been an Request by the state to receive Exhibit 32, Mr. Burke. Objected. All right, then your objections noted. It's overruled. Oh, exhibit, your Honor. exhibit 32 is received. Uh, the foundation has been laid and permission to publish is granted. On what grounds, Your Honor? The record speaks for itself. On what grounds, Your Honor? You may play. If you were standing in the middle of your group, were you on the left side or the right side? With the names that we looked at, Exhibit 33, does it appear as though that diagram was an accurate depiction of where the named girls were positioned at the time the SUV came into the group? Yes. I'm sorry, what's the objection? Here, say. Overruled. Okay. Do you recognize this video? Um, not the video, but... Do you recognize images from the video? It's... Overall, you may continue answering. Now do you recognize the video? Yeah. What does it show? Um, the car going through and someone flying. Is that an accurate depiction of the scene as you saw it that day? Mm-hmm. She already stated she didn't recognize the video. We're at a frame at two seconds. There's a figure on the bottom, on the left side of the screen, who appears to be wearing black with long hair. You recognize that person? Yes. Can you see any features? Mr. Brooks, that's argumentative. Your objections noted. It's overruled. You may answer. Hearsay. Objection. Not hearsay. You may answer. Clear your say. 
Do you recognize that video? Yes. What does it show? Um, the car going through. Through your dance group? Yes. Is that an accurate video depicting the events that day? Yes. Move Exhibit 35 into evidence and request permission to publish. Is the video, who, who even took the video, is it, res is it relevant? It's not an objection, it's a statement. Um, we can ask questions later. Go ahead. So, Judge, before we begin, I have to step in here and request that Mr. Brooks be instructed to stop making comments under his breath. This witness is very clearly having an emotional and difficult time testifying, and she doesn't need to hear that. Objection. She can't hear anything I'm saying. Mr. Brooks, the mics are very good in this courtroom, so please okay. refrain. All right, keep going. Thank you. You knew Vivian Urell before November 21st, right? Yes. And do you recall seeing her uh, either while the SUV was driving through or after? Um, Objection, hearsay. Can you describe the circumstances when you saw her after? Objection, hearsay. Mr. Brooks, I'm going to direct your attention to review section 908.01. You have a statute book. Please do that. It's not hearsay. Do you remember now um, talking about what happened to Sam? I didn't see Sam. I only saw her dad. Okay. And you didn't see her in the hospital afterwards? Not that night, no. Did you see her uh, in the days following this incident? Objection. Overruled. Um, yeah, as soon as the day she was able to have a visitor, I was there. When you say visitor, what do you mean? Where was she? Overruled. And you know she was injured as a result of what? Um, You're not able to give an accurate estimate about how fast the SUV was traveling at that point, is that right? I could. Okay. Well, please, um, if you think you can, please tell us how fast do you think it was traveling. I thought around 55. This is many of your hearsay objections. They're not hearsay at all, sir. And I hope you're not just saying them just to interpose an objection. Uh, but I think it would be very helpful if you were to familiarize yourself uh, with that. Uh, how would... For the record, Your Honor, how do I know that, that the prosecution isn't objecting to in, anything based on the same assumptions? I don't understand uh, what you're saying. I realize you are not uh, a lawyer, Mr. Brooks, but you still should have a good faith basis to make the objection and then not argue uh, with me when I rule on the objection. I just, I don't understand how someone can testify to things being told in the hospital that they're, they're not a family member, a parent, or anything. So how would they know what injuries someone would have? How would that information be disclosed to someone without being a parent or a direct relative? That would be hearsay. You keep saying, I don't understand. I don't. Um, you did this of your own free will. You waived your right to an attorney, and the <laughs> ignorance that you claim is not valid at this point, sir. So I, I also that, altered that contract, Your Honor. You accepted the contract in the, in the way that I sent it back to you. Now let's sir, let's we be don't fair. Have a contract together. The contract was not. being You're misapplied right. in this circumstance. All right, we are in recess. I'll see everyone. Uh, let's be back at uh, one thirty. Thank you, everyone. I think it's relevant. Subject matter jurisdiction can't be forfeited or waived. You know that by not answering, Your Honor. Please, the jury's coming off. By not answering, Your Honor, you are agreeing to a tactic agreement. Is that a judicial determination that you don't have to answer? I'll take that as a yes. Thank you, everyone. Please be seated. All right, Mr. Brooks, you may question the witness if you have any questions for her. I don't consent to being called that name, as I stated before. I will note that, like that noted the for the record. Can question the witness. Sir. Is that noted for the record, Your Honor? Ask your questions, please. Is it noted for the record, Your Honor? As you testified to earlier, you were present at the Christmas parade on November 21st of 2021. That'd be fair to say. Do you remember about how long you intended to be at the parade? It was a few exhibits that you 
stated on record that you weren't familiar with seeing. Would that be fair to say? Uh, once clarified, I did say that. I remembered seeing them. So you you saw those videos before today? About how many times do, do you recall seeing them before today? Just once. Do you recall who showed them to you? You stated for the record and for the jury? Can you repeat that? Can you state who showed you the videos for the record and for the jury? Um, yeah, the state. And who you who would you be referring to when you say the state? Um, the three seated next to you. Are you referring to the, the opposite table next to me? Yes. Let the record reflect that. She identified the three prosecutors sitting at the prosecution table. No objection. The record will so reflect. Do you recall knowing if you would possibly be called to testify? Were you expecting to testify? Do you recall if that letter was a subpoena? Frequently uh, referred to the vehicle as the car, the car. Do you recall those statements? Yes. So for clarification, what type of vehicle did you see that day? Was it a car? It was a Ford SUV. And how were you able to determine the make and model of the vehicle? Objection. The did not describe the model. Rounds. Um, overruled, she may answer, I saw the Ford emblem, that's how I knew it was a Ford. And during those determinations of the make and model of the vehicle, did you catch a description of the driver? Any reason why you would be more focused on the make and model of the vehicle instead of who was driving the vehicle? And you didn't try to uh, see if you can spot a license plate in, at any time? It all happened way too fast. So would it be fair to say that it happened fast enough for you to not be able to make uh, make out the model and make of the vehicle, but not exactly who was driving the vehicle. You stated that you observed uh, some girls from your dance team in the hospital. Would that be fair to say? And you stated that a few of them were laying on the ground. Any any idea why they be, would be laying on the ground in the hospital? Because there were so many people. Were they being attended to at that time? Did you recall feeling like maybe they should have been attended to seeing as how they may have been seriously injured? The nurses were doing the best they could. So it would be fair to say that the girls that you observed on the ground weren't of immediate concern to the nurses at that time. Were you injured in any way during this incident? And you testified earlier to uh, the approximate speed of the vehicle. Do, do you recall what your answer was? Yeah, about 55 miles per hour. And how were you able to come to that determination? I've drove for a couple of years now and that's just the number that came to my head because when I drive I know what 55 feels like and I know what 25 feels like and that was just my best guess. So it would be fair to say that you were making an assumption you didn't know for sure. It's just my best guess. And what relation do you have to Sam? Is she just part of the dance group or close friend or do you recall seeing her struck by the vehicle? Do you remember where she was at the time that you saw the vehicle pass you? Would it be fair to say that from that angle that you would be able to see her if she was struck? She was behind my back. So you don't know for sure where she was at when the vehicle passed you? Do you know if anyone was standing there or in that position with her at that time? So it would have been people in her general area but not directly next to her? Yeah. Do you remember what you did immediately after the vehicle passed you? In regards to your dance team, did you observe anyone struck? I just remember seeing bodies in the air. So at that point, it would be fair to say that you didn't know if the people that were on the ground or in the air or whatnot were in fact struck by a vehicle. I think I blacked out. By blacked out, what do you mean by that? State that what that means for the jury and for the record. I can't see anything, but I can hear. When I say black out, I mean I can't visualize it, but I can hear it happening. Is that the first time that you ever had a blackout? So it's never happened before that day? Never. Any idea what caused it on that occasion? Stress. Shock. And you stated that you um, got into an uh, ambulance and with someone who was struck and then left the parade at that point? A squad car, yes. Oh, I'm sorry. A, a squad. You, you left at that point. Yeah. Do you recall about what time that was? Do you recall how long you were uh, with the person being transported at that time? Do you recall if anyone was walking directly next to you at the time of the incident? 
Do you recall walking next to Sam or Sam walking next to you? Do you recall making the statement that, and this is, I'm guessing, in a summary report given to uh, Detective Schwartz. Do you recall being interviewed by Detective Schwartz? Mm -hmm. Yes. Do you recall making the statement that Samantha was walking next to you? Uh, no, I don't recall that. Do you recall making a statement that you did not have enough time to tell Sam to move? Yes. And this was the same Sam that you just testified that you did not see sh struck, correct? Yeah. Yes, I didn't see her hit. So it would be fair to say that you made the statement that you didn't have enough time to tell her to move, but didn't actually see what happened to her. Any idea what may have stopped you from being able to see what happened? Because I blacked out. At the point that you blacked out, at that point you didn't see anyone struck. Would that be fair to say? I think I kind of try to block it out. Do you recall making a statement that everything happened so fast? Yes. But not fast enough for you to identify the, the vehicle. Do you recall if the vehicle had any damage at that point? For it, I wasn't looking for any damage. About how close would you estimate the vehicle came to you? Did it get close to you? I don't know, I blacked out. Do you remember what side of the road you were on when you blacked out? I was on the left side. I was on the right side. So at what point did your memory go fuzzy? I told myself, you're crazy. All of a sudden, I don't remember anything. Any idea how long that may have been, roughly, if you recall? A second. Pretty much like the snap of a finger. And from your recollection, that was quick enough for you to miss anybody being struck? I blacked out. Outside of a... Detective Schwartz, um, did you, were you interviewed by any other law enforcement? Um, what about at the hospital? Were you interviewed at the hospital? Um, did you call yourself to make a report about what you saw that, that evening? Did you do any follow-up to see if your report, report was received by anyone in law enforcement? Did anybody from law enforcement contact you about the statement that you gave? Do you recall at any time reading or seeing a complaint in this matter? Do you recall at any time filing any claim in this matter? Would you consider yourself a party to this matter? Objection. Grounds. Sustained. Do you recall if you were contacted by the plaintiff in this matter? Objection. Grounds. Relevance. Grounds. I'm overruled. She may answer. Can you um, say who the plaintiff is? I'm asking you, do, are you aware of the plaintiff? Were you contacted by the plaintiff at, at any time? I don't know um, what the plaintiff is. The plaintiff would be who, whoever is bringing the claim for the charges in the matter. So not, um, then yeah. Objection. Yeah, yeah, what, you you were contacted by the plaintiff? Objection. She answered yes. I'll oh, ask the grounds. An objection, hold on. Objection, move to strike. Grounds. Legal analysis. Grounds. And the defendant has testified. <laughs> um, I'll sustain. The objection will grant the request to strike uh, the question and the answer for the reasons given by the state. Who were you contacted about testifying? Um, the state. And that, I'm assuming the state of Wisconsin, correct? Right there. Right there as in referring to the prosecution table? Correct. To let the record show that she identified the state as the three attorneys at the prosecution table. No objection. And do you recall having a conversation with the state? Would it be fair to say that you would identify the state as the plaintiff in this matter? Objection. Grounds. Sustained. Have you ever had any interactions with the plaintiff in this matter? Objection. Grounds. Relevance. Sustained. Do you see the plaintiff in the courtroom today? Same objection. Grounds. Sustained. Do you even know if there's a plaintiff? Same objection. Grounds. Sustained. So as far as you know, in your opinion, who would you say is the plaintiff in this matter? Objection. Grounds. Sustained. Were you present at the parade with any family that day? Just one second. And when you visited the hospital, how did you learn of the injuries to any of your uh, dance team partners? Um, which hospital are you referring to? Um, I only heard you say Memorial.
you, you might have said too, I think you said children's one time too, would that be fair to say? Yeah, that's correct. Uh, um, I guess I would be referring to Memorial. Um, so, the only injury, um, well not even injury, I only knew um, Julia had something wrong with her brain at the time because they saw spinal fluid coming out of her nose. And were you told that directly from a doctor? I heard them um, freaking out and rushing her to a CT scan because I was right next to her um, helping them as she seized and vomited. So you overheard with from the nurses what the diagnosis was? Yes. What about for um, Sam? Uh, when uh, I'm guessing you saw her at some point that, that night. I did not see her that night. Uh, did you see her at any point? I did. Um, I was there at the hospital the first day she was able to have a visitor. And were you told directly by uh, medical professionals at that time that you were able to see her of any possible injuries? I wasn't told by them. Um, she actually called me. Can I strike that answer for here, Sonny? No, he asked the question. But the answer was hearsay. But you asked the question. In the days after the incident, um, did you have quite a few uh, interactions with the dance team? Did you, uh, did you attend any visuals or any memorials or anything like that? Would you stay for the record and for the jury how many? Um, I believe it was on Monday I went to that vigil. And that would be the only one that you attended? Yeah, that was the only one they had. Were you aware of uh, things set up uh, financially for the victims? Were you aware of any, any, uh, for example, like GoFundMe's or, or uh, donations or anything for the victims? Were you aware of anything like that going on in the days after the incident? Objection. Grounds. <coughs> Grounds. Sustained. Did you yourself uh, donate to any causes associated with the incident? Are you still currently uh, a member of the dance team? I am um, not. I do not work there anymore. And was that decision made by the incident or was it just a personal decision? Objection. Grounds? Sustained. You testified earlier to uh, having the blackout and that being the first time that that happened. Would that be fair to say? Yes. Have you had any blackouts any time since that day? No. First and only time would be that day? Correct. No further questions. You do have a visual memory of the immediate aftermath of the strike? I do. And what is that memory? Here's that. Let me answer. It's overruled. At any time in your life before November 21st of 2021, had you ever witnessed an SUV drive through a group of young women? Objection. No. Hearsay. Overruled. Objection. Relevancy. Overruled. You may answer. No. What about any time since November 21st, 2021? Objection. Relevancy. Overruled. There's the video playing at the right speed. That's my understanding. It will be. We'll double check for Mr. Brooks. Can we make sure that we get it at 100%? Yep. It just wasn't. It had to be turned up. So that means when it was just showed, it wasn't playing at the right speed. I think I can just very simply clarify. To adjust the speed, you have to change it to see what it's set at. So it was at 100%, and it is now back at 100%. Thank you. <laughs> I object to that for the record. It clearly wasn't at the right speed. Plus the statement made by Attorney Wichow regarding the speed, and the court accepts that. Based on your position in the road and your memory from that day, are you able to identify? Uh, Anybody else who's depicted in the video at this point? Um, I believe that's Olivia Stover in the left. And what color is her hair? Brown. Could you please circle Olivia for us? And I ask to um, preserve that annotation and mark it as Exhibit 36B and to enter it into evidence, please. Okay. Can you see face. The instructions noted 
36B is received and the annotation will be captured and preserved for the record. You know who Charlotte Ural is? Yes. Can you explain for us um, her relationship to the extreme dance group? Overrule the answer. Okay. When did you see her af after the SUV went through the group? When's the next time you saw Charlotte Ural? <laughs> Weeks later at the dance studio. Okay. And did you make any observations of Charlotte at that time? She was on crutches. Do you know why she was on crutches? This is a red SUV that is smashed up. And there is a white light up headband on what used to be the side mirror. Do you recognize that white light up headband? Yes. What is it? Overruled. Is this photo an accurate depiction of how that headband looked uh, the day of the parade? Yes. Before. Yep. Obviously, it's not on anybody's head right now. Yes. Okay. Um, I move Exhibit 102 into evidence and ask for permission to publish. <laughs> the court's going to withhold receiving Exhibit 102 until further foundation can be laid. That's all I have. Thank you. All right. Any questions for this witness? <sighs> yeah. <laughs> uh, do you recall what time you arrived at the parade that evening? Um, did you come with anybody? or? I came with Alyssa. Would it be fair to say that you guys are pretty close? Um, do you recall giving statement to Detective Schwartz? Do you recall at what time that was roughly after the incident? Do you remember where you were when you gave the statement? And when did you first notice a vehicle approaching? Do you recall how close the vehicle was to you at the time where you looked over your left shoulder? Were you able to identify any driver of the vehicle? Would it be fair to say that you refer to it, the vehicle numerous times as car? Would it also be fair to say that you then identified it as an SUV? So what exactly did you see? What type of vehicle did you actually see, an SUV or a car? It was an SUV. Any reason why you would refer to it as car? Would it be fair to say that certain vehicles look different than others? Absolutely. At what point do you recall hearing uh, that, that there may have been an active shooter? When I was gathering the girls who hadn't been hit. <laughs> did you hear any shots? And where did you go from there after you were informed that there may be an active shooter? Uh, you were shown a few videos. Uh, do you recall seeing those before today? How many times have you seen them before today? At least 10 times. So pretty frequently. Would it be fair to say that you uh, saw those numerous times to maybe bring back something you couldn't recall? You stay for the record and for the jury who showed you the, these uh, videos multiple times? They were sent to me. So that would be, were they sent via email or? Over text message. Can you stay for the record and for the jury who they, the text messages were sent from? Alyssa. So they weren't sent by any law enforcement or? No. To the best of your knowledge, can you recall how Alyssa was able to obtain the uh, vid the videos that you saw today? I'm not sure. So she never mentioned that to you in any way at any time? No. Were you able to identify the driver? Were you able to identify a license place number? Were you injured during the incident in any way? Did you uh, go to the hospital after the event? Were you transported there or did you drive there yourself or do you recall how long you stayed at the hospital? Not long. I was told just to go get a police statement. So it would be it would be fair to say that you went to the hospital strictly for the police statement and were you able to gain the information that you were seeking? So that would explain the, uh, the briefs stay at the hospital. Did you learn any additional information at that point? Do you recall in the statement that you gave to the Detective Schwartz that you observe people running towards the sidewalk? Did you see anyone on the sidewalk struck by the vehicle? Do you recall stating that you were waiting inside of a building for what seemed like a long time? What would you estimate time-wise what time frame that would be? Can I just object here and ask for clarification about what building we're talking about? Well, from the report, it just says 
they needed to seek shelter inside of a building so it doesn't it doesn't say uh, the name of the building in the report I guess that's why I didn't refer to a sp specific name of the building just ask your question Mr. Brooks please rephrase how long were you how long would you estimate you seek shelter and did you immediately leave from that point do you recall giving a written statement do you recall who you gave the uh, written statement to do you recall in your written statement saying that it seemed as if something was wrong with the vehicle yes and what would you from your recollection what would you say was wrong with the vehicle it was going very fast i thought maybe there was brake failure happening because it was going so fast and what made you come to that conclusion because there was a car driving through a parade instead of slowly rolling through like the other vehicles so it'd be fair to say your initial thought was something was wrong with the vehicle yes did you see any smoking from the vehicle any damage to the vehicle at that point did you observe where the vehicle went after it passed you? Did you see anyone struck after the vehicle passed you? Would you say it was uh, pretty loud that, that night? A pretty windy, cold? After you had been waiting in the, uh, the building for a while, who came and informed you guys that it was okay to leave at that point? Uh, it was police. Was it one officer? A couple Just of one. Them? At that point, did you ask the police officers for any information about the active shooter? By what time would you estimate that you left the parade? Do you recall if the vehicle had any tinted windows? Were you close enough to the vehicle to make to make out the make and model of the vehicle? Do you recall any windows being down or anything like that? Recall anything being tossed from the vehicle, uh, falling out of the vehicle? It was just pretty much just moving straight. By how long would you approximate you watch the travel of the vehicle after it had passed you? I didn't watch the vehicle after it, but passed me. I was looking at the dancers on the ground. So it would be fair to say that once the vehicle passed you, you couldn't see if it struck anyone else at that point. No further questions. That's all I have, thank you. Go ahead, cross. Uh, very, very briefly. You stated earlier that uh, in reference to traveling through frames that Sometimes you may encounter problems with the estimation. Would that be fair to say? Uh, no, I don't believe that was my testimony. You testified to, um, at one point or another, that sometimes timing, exact timing of speed could be a little inaccurate. What were you referring to at that? So there can be sometimes miscalculation. Is that fair to say? Well, I was referring to the process in general, which you just stated that sometimes it could, by milliseconds, hundreds of milliseconds, a millisecond, that sometimes there can be miscalculation. The, the process in general. It's possible. Before this occasion, had you used the same method that you used for this occasion? How many times? I had not used it in a life case. But the first time you've done it in a life case. Can you state for the jury what is the difference between a live case and any other case? Uh, there, there really is no difference. So. If they're pretty much the same, why is it a need for the title live if they're pretty much the same? So were the other cases just pretty standard cases then, not live investigations? So they weren't active investigations to the best of your knowledge? Correct. So this time that you used this, this technology was the first time to your knowledge that it was during a live investigation. So would it be fair to say that that's like the first time it's being used? Oh, I'm not sure I'm understanding. Is it fair to say that this specific investigation was the first time that you've used it? This was the first time I personally used the software. And so would it be fair to say that usually anyone's first time using new technology, there would be a learning curve? Would that be fair to say? I would say no. So you would say you came right into using this new technology the first time you've ever personally used it and knew exactly how to work it? I would say over my career, uh, especially with uh, conducting digital forensic examinations, uh, I've had over 1,500 hours of training in various aspects. I'm a certified trainer. I hold a um, 
certified forensic computer examiner certification through the International Association of Computer Investigative Specialists, along with other uh, certifications as well. I obtained multiple certifications from Empathies, the company that put on the training uh, for this process, for this device, for video analysis. You, you're stating some pretty uh, nice credentials there, but you, you also just said that there's some difficulty in the training. Would any of that difficulty lean towards the learning curve of working the software? So you you pretty much can come into new technology and just know exactly how to work it. You're just ready to go. Objection, argumentative, and answer. Grounds. Um, overruled, he may answer. I attended a 40-hour class using the software inputs along with uh, forensic video analysis at the National Computer Forensic Institute uh, run by the Secret Service in Alabama. And then I also obtained uh, several certifications through inputs themselves. So having approximately 80 hours of training uh, through video software, um, this was not much of a learning curve as I had previously been using input software for approximately two years. So this new technology was a variation of, well, let, let me back up a bit. What you're saying is this new technology was a variation of technology that you had already previously been using. Objection. This characterizes the evidence. Grounds. This is not new technology. Grounds. Uh, sustained us to the form of the question. Before using it, this technology in this live investigation, as you coined it, have you previously heard of this technology before using it in this live investigation? Any idea how long it may have been being used before you used it? We first started investigating it in approximately January. January of 2022? Yes. You are aware that this live investigation would have been a live investigation in November of 2021. Would that be fair to say? Yes. So it will also be fair to say that if your department didn't start using this technology until January of 2022, how were you able to use it in November of 2021? Uh, this was not conducted in November of 2021. Then we had to schedule the training. The training was supposed to be earlier in the spring. The classes got pushed back to summer. In the summer, we actually had the uh, class with the hands-on examples. After that is when we uh, actually went out and were able to do the speed analysis. So the bulk of your uh, learning to work this technology was done via video? Video and uh, live instruction. And that live instruction was in the summer, as you stated, correct? So when did you, uh, around what time did you do this analysis? Somewhere around the middle of August. I can't remember the exact date. So pretty recent? Yes. Any idea why so long, considering that uh, this matter has been going on for roughly a year? Objection, asked and answered. Grounds. For the last three to five minutes. Grounds. Overruled, he may answer. So your department thought it would be best to hold off on the analysis until you got everything in order. Would it be fair to say that that's a pretty lengthy amount of time to wait to do an analysis in a case that's a pretty big case. Have you ever had that sort of delay before in any other live investigations? So there's a, a delay because of the financial part of the investigations? Or I'm not sure I'm getting with some any idea how that might apply to this live investigation? I'm, I'm not sure I understand the question. How the the financial part of the equipment, and as you said, sometimes things can get expensive. Would that apply to this live investigation of why the delay was so long? Objection. Grounds. Elements. Grounds. Overruled, you may answer. Do you recall who you were referred to to do the analysis? As far as basically who tapped you to do it? I'm quite sure you're not the only person that does what you does out of your department. Would that be fair to say? So who tapped you to be the video analysis for this particular case? I was the only one at our agency that would be able to perform that at this time. Who contacted your agency? De Detective Casey. Who does Detective Casey work for from your knowledge? Uh, City Waukesha Police Department. Uh, was Detective Casey made aware that it would be a long delay before the analysis can get completed? Was Detective Casey informed that it would be such a lengthy delay? Grounds. Overruled, he may answer. Were there uh, any, I guess I would say, 
suggestions that maybe you can use a different technology that wouldn't have caused such a long delay? So what video analysis were you doing before this new technology that you just started using? So there was no technology specific to speed analysis before this new technology? So would there have been someone else tapped to do the analysis if it wasn't for this new method? I'm, I'm a little confused because Do you do video and speed analysis or one of the other? Because you just stated, and you, I think it would be fair to ask, did you, did you just not state that this was pertaining to speed analysis? Yes, I do video analysis for all types of cases, whatever is requested. So how were you able to come up with an analysis of the speed in this investigation? Was there... Any other method, well, let me back up. Was there any other technology that you could have utilized that same method without a delay? Objection asked in attendance. Ground. Sustain. You stated that you've done speed analysis numerous times. Would that be fair to say? It was not in um, an investigation done by our agency. So it would be fair to say you yourself haven't done very many speed analysis. I couldn't give you a firm number of how many we did in, in training over that time. Um, but no, I'll not, not we, you. I'm asking specific to you yourself. I have not currently performed any for any other agency yet, no. Maybe you could have been off on a few of your analysis, being that it was your first time doing it in a live investigation, as you coined it. No, I would, I would not say that. Grounds. Hold on. What's the objection? Calls for speculation and argumentative. Grounds. That grounds in that. Um, Mr. Brooks, what was your question again? Uh, my question was that would it be fair to say that since he stated that this was his first time doing a speed analysis in a live investigation and he hadn't done, pretty much haven't done it before, would it be fair to say that maybe he could have been off a little bit on his, mis uh, on his calculations being that it was his first time? Um, overall, he may answer. I, I would say no to that. Um, with this, again, we're following the process of uh, digital forensics. We, it's a scientific process. We learn a technique. We follow the process, we follow the standards. It's designed to be verifiable and repeatable, repeatable by anybody else that would have that training and um, that software performant. The files can be turned over to another person with equal training. They should be able to walk step by step and still come to the same conclusion. So I would say I'm confident in the speed that was obtained. So if someone else can come to the same conclusions that you came to, is it fair to say that someone else more, a little more experienced could have been tapped to do the speed analysis instead of yourself? Is it possible that a, a different agency could have been tapped to do the speed analysis? I, this is outside of the witness's grounds. personal knowledge. Grounds. Um, sustained as to the form of the question. Besides yourself, do you know of anybody that can do this analysis and come to the same conclusions as yourself? Or would it be fair to say that you weren't the only one being trained through video and the like? Sorry, I don't understand the question. Um, you, you stated that you have to be trained in this form of doing the analysis. You stated the classes were, I think, from somewhere from May to August, you, you stated. Would that be fair to say? Yes. What I'm asking is, were you the only person that was taking those classes? Anybody in Wisconsin that you know of? From any other departments that you know of? So it would be fair to say that you, you're not sure but I have not heard of anybody else in this area having uh, the, the ability to do the speed analysis through video. So it would be fair to say you're not sure. Could, could you clarify one more time, please? I was, I was, pretty, I was pretty direct. Mr. Brooks asked as, a question. As far he doesn't understand your question. That's why he's asking. Did you know of anyone else that was taking the same training to operate the same equipment and technology that you were? Personally, no. 
So it would be fair to say that you're not sure. Nobody in the classes that I was um, enrolled in were from the state of Wisconsin. And how did you come to that conclusion? They're typically during our classes, we go through an introduction. So it was kind of like, uh, because you did state that they were kind of like video, so I'm assuming that would be online. Would that be fair to say? So it would pretty much be like a, a, a classroom from an online setting. Objection asked and answered, and I would, uh, well, relevance. Grounds. It's been asked and answered, so sustain. Next question. About how long did it take when you started to do the analysis? How long did it take from the point that you started until completion? I would say probably someplace between 20 and 24 hours to put it all together. So about a, roughly a day. Would it be any reason why you, if you knew that you were being certified uh, for that analysis, would it be any reason why you wouldn't start getting things in place beforehand and to be ready to go as soon as you needed to be ready to go? Everything was there ready to go once I had that certification. So it would be fair to say that you had help in getting everything ready. Were you at any time trained in the 3D scanning? I am not currently trained in the operation of the Pharaoh. That's why I requested um, Specialist Platt and Specialist Schmidt to perform that scan. Do you know if uh, those two specialists, were any of those two trained in the same speed analysis training as yourself? No, they are trained in forensic crime scene mapping. Would it be fair to say that even though they're, they are not trained in the same area as yourself, that they were an essential key part to putting everything together? So it would, it would have been, it, it, it's fair to say it would have been a, a task if you would have had to do it by yourself. Did that in any way cause any delay? No. Do you recall about what date you started the analysis? I... Rouse. Overruled, he may answer. I want to say the last certification was obtained somewhere right around August 16th, and then it was putting everything together afterwards. I'm sorry, did you state the last certification was obtained around August 16th? The, the last training class, yes. So at the time that you started, you weren't yet certified. Why would you be starting the prep for the analysis if you were not yet certified? Objection. Grounds. Sustained us to the form of the question. You just stated that um, preparations to do the analysis started around August 10th. Is that correct? So when did you come into the fold to start doing your part of the uh, analysis? I obtained my training from the National Computer Forensic Institute in video analysis in April of 2021 and I was already certified through them so I was already certified. And when did you receive those uh, materials? Right around August 16th. I can't remember if it was that so, day exactly, but... But it is fair to say that you had already started work before the date of August 16th. So when did you actually start to do the analysis? What, what date was that? Grounds. Sustained. Do you know about the date that you completed your analysis? Somewhere around August 23rd, 22nd, 23rd. So it would be fair to say roughly about a week or so? And do you recall when you um, actually turned in the analysis information? Uh, do you recall who you turned the analysis information into? Any idea how long it took for it to be viewed? At the point that you started your part of the analysis, did you still need the help of the, the other two people from your department? So once you started, it was just yourself. And you, you were confident that you were fully trained, you wouldn't have any hiccups working this technology for the first time. You were pretty sure that you, you would get everything on point? Yes. No further questions. Or I should say you obtained that video and then in August conducted your speed analysis with it, right? Yes, okay. that's correct. August of 2022. That's fair. August 2022. I stand corrected. If you were to clean slate, take that video file, start your calculations here today, would you come to the same conclusion in terms of miles per hour over those 26 frames? Yes. Objection hearsay. Overruled his answer in my stand. You're certified to conduct speed analysis using that software? Yes. This case is not the first time that you use that software, is that correct? Correct. Uh, Overruled. 
You asked him questions about that, so he'll, he gets to redirect. You may answer. Your training involves using the Faro 3D scanning tool, correct? Well, mm, no, it, it, that was not. State, state. Hasn't provided the oh, answer. Sorry. So rephrase your question, please. Sure. <laughs> During your training to use the Input Ace software, did you follow the same procedure in terms of using the Faro 3D scanning? Yes, yes. I see Are you the first person to testify about speed analysis using the Input Ace software in any court in this country? No. Object. Overruled. His answer may stand. So when reference was made during cross-examination about this being new, air quotes, software or new technology, is that an accurate uh, description of the technology? No, objection. I was referring it to it being new to him, strictly to Your himself. objections noted. His answer may stand. Next question. All right. We are officially back on the record. Then appearances are as they were before. We'll br bring the jury out and then the state may call its next witness. So go ahead. The jurisdiction, Your Honor. The perfect denied. time. Yeah, what? Request to address it is denied. Is that a judicial determination, Your Honor? It's denied. Is that a I'm not going to address it right now. I've addressed it previously. No. There's no new information. Denied. Okay. Is it a judicial determination you're making, Your Honor? The record speaks for itself. Can it be filed in a motion? I don't understand the question. Can I file the <coughs> motion that I've been raising? I'm not going to answer that, sir. I'm not going to direct you to file something or not file something. The jury's coming out. Is that a judicial determination, Your Honor? All right. Agreement. You previously said that you were across the street from Chef Pam's? Yes. So you would have been on the south side of the street? Yeah. Okay. Do you remember what the vehicle that was speeding <coughs> towards you looked like? Speeding. Um, Sustained as to the form of the question, please rephrase. Okay, my mistake. I thought that that's what you said. I um, I froze as it was coming closer. Um, by the time that I finally um, tried to move, it was already like right at us, and um, I was hit on my left um, left foot, left leg. What area of your left foot and left leg? Objection. While you were on the ground, could you hear the sound of the vehicle's engine? I. Um, the objections noted it's overruled. You may answer. Does this depict you and Isaac before, during, or after you were struck? Before. Is this an accurate depiction of how you looked that day? Yes. Isaac as well? Yes. Move exhibit 43 into evidence and ask to publish. Objection. Where, where are where are they in the video? Um, your objection is noted. The exhibit number forty three is received. Permission to publish is granted. Do you see either yourself or Isaac in this photo? I see both. And is this an accurate picture of how you looked after the vehicle struck you? Yes. Move exhibit forty five into evidence and ask to publish. Objection. Can't really see. Your objection is noted. It's overruled. Exhibit 45 is received. Permission to publish is granted. Thank you. Right. Thank you. Last uh, exhibit. Because you just said that. We'll take that up outside the presence of the jury. Don't let me forget. All right. Then uh, go ahead if you have any cross for this witness. Um, you stated that you went to the urgent care in Pewaukee the next day. Would that be fair to say? Um, what caused the day delay? So you had went home for the evening and decided to just go to urgent care the next day. So from your recollection, you weren't in need of immediate medical attention. 
any reason why you didn't take uh, your son to seek immediate attention? I decided to wait until the next day. Do you recall giving an interview with a detective agent? Do you recall the date that you gave the interview? Was it a few days after the incident, a week, or any idea why it took a few days to make a report? Did you uh, seek to make a report the evening of the incident? No. Any reason why? So at the time you didn't, you didn't feel like you needed to make a report immediately. Would that be fair to say? So I was crying when I got home. Uh, you stated your uh, boyfriend was uh, with you that that evening. Would that be fair to say? Um, do you know if he was injured in any way? You stated that you heard him saying "Whoa, whoa, whoa." Do you know where he went from that moment? In the videos that you saw, did you, did you see him in the video anywhere? So it'd be fair to say that. You couldn't see him in the videos that you just saw like two, three minutes ago. I cannot remember what he was wearing. Any reason why you remember what you and your son was wearing, but not your boyfriend who was present with you at the incident? I don't know what he wears. Do you remember seeing him after the, directly after the incident? Did he leave with you when you left to go home? And you were also there with um, other children? Yes. Of yours, correct? Yes. Were any of those children hurt in the incident? Not hurt by the vehicle. So they weren't struck by the vehicle to your knowledge? Do you recall where they were when the vehicle passed you? I, um... Do you know about how far approximately from you they were? I do not. Do you remember uh, if you were next to an intersection or a cross street? To the left of me, um, there was an inter intersection. Do you remember what intersection that was? Um, do we have... Exhibit 15, I believe it is. Pull that up for Permission granted. Can you zoom in a little bit? Can you see the screen right now in front of you? Can you make out uh, your names on that screen? Can you see the black line pointing to a star? Where would you estimate that is? On um, Main Street and Broadway. So it's, it would be fair to say that that cross street was in fact Broadway? Yes. Can the record reflect that? The cross street of Broadway is identified. Okay. The record will still reflect. Do you see the red line right there under the star inside of the uh, police badge emblem? Do you know what that red line indicates? Do you know if there was a barrier at that intersection? Do you recall where you where you saw the barriers at? Did you see the the barriers anywhere in your vicinity, in your immediate vicinity where you were stationed at? Do you recall when you first, oh, you can pull this down, I'm sorry. Take that off screen. Do you recall what you were, oh, let me back up. Do you recall seeing the vehicle approach? I do. Were you able to estimate how fast the vehicle was traveling at that point when it was approaching? I wouldn't know. Did you make out <coughs> the make and model of the vehicle that was approaching? Did you see the driver? Were there any tents to the vehicle that, that you recall? Did you catch the license plate number? Did you observe the vehicle strike anyone before it got to you? After it passed you? Before it passed me. After it passed you? Did you observe the, the vehicle strike anyone once it passed you? Do you recall your boyfriend taking a, a video of the incident? Yes, I do. Have you seen that video? Was that video uh, given to any law enforcement that you recall? It was not. Any reason why? It was too blurry to see anything. So it would be fair to say the video was pretty much disregarded at that point? Yes. Any reason why it would be disregarded? You could not see anything. So it was dis it was fair to say it was disregarded because the video, in fact, could, could not, you couldn't see anything from the video? And when you and your son were treated for your injuries at urgent care in Pewaukee, about how long did the treatment last before you were discharged? We were there for at least an hour. Why so briefly? Objection. Grounds. Argumentative. Sustained. Were you given any uh, pain medication during the, during your treatment? Objection. Relevance. Grounds. Um, overruled. She may answer. Do you know if uh, your, your son was given any pain medication at that time? Do you recall it being uh, pretty loud out there that, that evening? Uh, pretty windy, pretty cold? It would be fair to say it was chilly enough to wear a, a jacket or a coat. Would that be fair to say? Would it be fair to say that maybe it was a little 
it was windy enough to wear a, a winter cap. Do you recall if you were wearing a winter cap? And would, do you recall if you had it pulled low, possibly over your ears? No. You don't recall? I, I'm sorry, I didn't know what the no was to, that's why. Um, I was wearing a, um, I was wearing a headband. I was not re wearing a, um, a cap. It'd be fair to just say that you just said you was wearing a cap. I don't consent to that now, Your Honor, for the record. Do you recall if anyone else you was with was wearing a, a winter cap? After your initial, uh, treatment, at uh, Urgent Care in Pewaukee, did you receive any more treatment after that? Did your son receive any more treatment after that? He did not. No further questions. Lee, redirect. On cross-examination, you testified that you saw other people get struck before the SUV got to you and your family, right? Yes. Based on what you saw with those girls getting hit, if you and Isaac had been standing 18 inches to the north, do you think you would have delayed until the next day to seek medical treatment? Jason, that's sub subjective. I don't have anything else for this witness. Thank you. All right. Thank you. You may step down. I, I intended to have 13 witnesses. So if I'm not obviously not able to call the 13th witness, how do I get my 13th witness? I can't answer that, sir. Would I still be able to have a 13th witness? You have to name the person. The due date was on Monday. I, so... I, who would be your 13th witness then, sir? I would have to look on my original witness list to get the 13th witness. I know that was my target, was 13. 